postman, Professor Belly Mail. This is not a glorification or a glamorization. This is an education. You can go anywhere in the world and get a couple of lives, but you come right here to get your treats. Be sure to click the notification bell, like, subscribe, and share, drop a comment down below. So when the dope content hit, it'll feel like it's the first and fifteenth. Lock the door. Professor Melby, the hood postman. So who I'm here with today? Are you here chilling with Stan? My name is Stanley Stenson Jr. I was born and raised right here on Melwood. My family built most of this. We're family. We know each other. For centuries and years and years, we have always been a family out here. The new generation started coming in, and they turned into what you call gangbanging, cripping. In other words, it turned into a country boy crip. But it used to be country family. But when it became country boy crip, it just started just, how you say, no loyalty, no family, and the gangs moved in. And for those who's watching, tell them where we at. We right here, we're right here on Melwood, uh, Lotus and Melwood. We out in the country. Everybody know what the country is. And Everybody what city? Know what the country is. In Bakersfield, California. Bakersfield, California. Yeah, yeah. So, Stan, what was your earliest remembrance? of when the gangs first started coming to Bakersfield? Well, my earliest remember is uh, probably in 78. Uh -huh. I was born in 73. Okay. So 78. Okay. 78, you start having people migrate from LA coming on down where they brought the word and the color blue and they brought the word Crippin'. So we we kind of we kind of took to the word Crippin' and blue and me and some of my friends, we was always young, so we started Watson Lotus. And we started Watson Lotus from Watson Lotus became Country Boy Crips. Country Boy Crips, that's interesting, man, because I remember coming out here in 70, 72, 73, yeah. I was seeing it hit up all over the walls was Crip, Crip, yeah, 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 and I'm yeah, thinking yeah. like, wow, yeah, yeah. they got the Crips in Vegas. Oh, man. You know? the, and I thought it was only in L.A., Compton, oh, and Watts, nah. but then I realized that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that it had migrated just that quick oh, it, out it here. it migrated quick. It, it, it started, so, like it's uh, almost like a fire. Sometimes a fire can start off like this, but if you catch the fire like this and put it out, it won't spread. But what happened with that, it started like this and became, everybody want to do it. Became Country Boy Crip, East Side Crip, West Side Crip. And to be honest with you, it wasn't no Cripping in Bakersfield. All the families out here was basically blood. We all was blood kin. So country was really Country Boy family. Uh -huh. But when the Crippin' came out and everybody started Crippin', they just put the Crip on the end and it became Country Boy Crip. But to be reality, everybody who was born and raised here in Bakersfield started off here in the country. Their family seen the direction that the country was going. It was going to violence. It was going to gangs. So their family started moving to the east side to make a better generation for their family. But it all started out here, right here in the country. From the 70s to the 80s to the 90s and even to now. And every generation, it just got worser and worser and worser and worser. But now we living in the era where most people were born and raised out here. Me, I was born and raised out here. My family built all this. My family been out here for over 200 years. My grandpa Vizi, he would have been 106 this year. The Wards, the Vesey's, the Browns, the Stinsons, the Coopers, all those are families that built all this. Now, it's what you call, uh, how you say, the real estate game, they, uh, they deprived us from what was deserved out here. Meaning they kept this property out here down. They kept it, uh, how you say, real estate profile. They kept it a black, uh, black zone. So everything out here couldn't grow with Bakersfield. See what I'm saying? As Bakersfield grew, this area didn't grow because they kept it a red zone because the word crypt came out here in the 70s and they was afraid of that. So what they did was they targeted this neighborhood for generations and generations and generations. But what don't, what don't nobody understand, this neighborhood has a landmark, street, highway. It's called Cottonwood Road. That was the first freeway here. Cottonwood Road goes all the way to the grapevine. Back in them days, they didn't have no cars. They had mules where they had to come out the mountains and build everything. So everything that was built here in Bakersfield came through this country. Not only, not only did it come to the country, but country was, was uh, how you say, agricultural. Yes. Agriculture. Back then, the big business was cotton. The country had cotton. 
So they came in and stripped us from cotton. It went from cotton to fruits and vegetables. But the only thing didn't progress with the community or with Bakersfield was black people. Hmm? It was black people. So. Why do you think that, what, what happened to black people here? Because well, they had everything. Well, we had it all. We had it all. And as we, as we had it all as a family, the system came in and divided us. They, they divided us and they, they made our families want more and more better. So our families start, our families start moving away from here for a better life for their families. And as they moved away from here, they forgot about here. And when they forgot about here, it allowed the gangs to come in and destroy it. When you say destroy it, what does that mean? That means when the gangs came in, the police, they started targeting us as gang members. And when they started targeting us as gang members, they started knocking off, how you say, the people that was important for the neighborhood, people like Bo Yachty, rest in peace. I remember Bo Yachty. He was a legend. If Bo Yachty be living today, this country wouldn't be where it's at. Legends like that. What okay. about Booger Red? Booger Red, Booger Red, he's, he's, he's a G. Booger Red is OG. He learned from going in and out of jail. When he got old, he said, man, I'm tired of going in and out of jail. I'm just going to live. So Booger Red just went around living and staying out the way and getting old. And I like that. I remember Ham and, 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 and Ray Ray and all those cats from Country Boy. And you know, most of them people are dead now. Wow. Most of them are dead now. And the new generation, they don't know about none of them because their family didn't teach them. And most of the generation now, they moved out here. Their family not from out here. Uh -huh. So when they moved out here, they came with that mentality as gangs. And they, they just started destroying it more and more and more and more. But it's people like me and you and our family that built this. And me too, when I was a kid, I was bad. I kind of followed the trend. I wanted to be hard. I wanted to be a gangbanger. You know what I'm saying? So me and all my friends, we started what you call Watson Lotus. And we started Watson Lotus. From there, Watson Lotus became Country Boy Crip. And when it, from there, it just went from, from blue to powder blue. And from there, you just start having, how you say, people that weren't from here clinging on to something. I noticed you got on a red shirt. So yeah. is that just showing that you don't, you don't subscribe to colors now? That you can just wear any color. You yeah. and, and, I have to grow out of it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and and I, and that's what we have to do as older men. We yeah, can't yeah. we can't be holding on to. No, we can't make come on now, man. We can't keep being old and want to be gangbangers. Right. We can't keep being old, keep doing the same dumb stuff. My mother always told me she said, "Baby, if you don't get control of your anger, it's gonna get the best of you." That's true. That's true. And we learned the hard way. And our family built all this, Bakersfield. You know, when our family migrated out here from Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, they came out here for a better life. And when they came out here, they gave us all this, nothing but dirt. And our families built this with their hands. They came out here and took a dirt that wasn't worth nothing. So they took that dirt and they flipped it. They made the soil rich where you can grow from it. It started off with cotton from the cotton to the fruits and vegetables. But to be honest with you, all this land out here, you wanna know the truth? All this land out here is Indian Reservation. They don't wanna tell you that. Wow. It's Indian Reservation. I know when I first started coming out here, my grandfather and grandmother, Emma Shotwell yeah. and Prince Shotwell, mm -hmm. they had they probably one of the old, oldest ranches right out for Horseyana, right? Mm -hmm. Horses, cows, hogs, chickens. All that. Everything had agriculture, yeah. everything, right? Yeah. And 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 he was one of the few black men that had it just that good. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, there yeah. wasn't many. There was others up and coming. Up and coming, yeah. But he was like he was really established, and in, in and to be here now yeah. is an honor because I'm looking at it. I don't even recognize it's Melwood. It's totally different. You remember when we was kids? We had the horses, the chickens, and everything in the backyard. Yes. We had the, we had the garden. Yeah. So really, never had to go to the grocery store for nothing. no. So everything we were putting into our children was healthy. So now you're going to the grocery store. All that stuff is, is is chemical. Out here, we grew natural. We are the first farmers. We are the first agriculture. Black people are. We are. But in the, in the generation now, 
it's been got downplayed. Most black people don't want to go to the fields and work. Do you think Crip and, 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 and part of being a blood or pyro or whatever helped change that and uprooted that culture and made it just like transition into another, not nothing good, but something worse than yeah, what, it what it was? It did. It did. And if you think about it, blue and red, Crippin. What's the first war we ever had in America? The North against the South. Right. What was the color? Civil War, red and colors? blue. See what I'm saying? So they took that generation and they brought it back to our generation and it just made it more violent. Because they understood. Because they understood it. So now we'll take the Civil War and put it into the community, black communities, and put them at war with each other. And the best way to do that is by depriving them from financial stability, being able to borrow on their property, not having the right value of their property, and everything. And then in the long run, they came and stole the property from all the blacks. Lock the door. Straight out of Compton, original streets. Grew up with the lion, see what the criminals see. Now he a giant and a pivotal key. Got it down to a science, this the visual streets. He came up with bullet, he came up with turtle. Live life to the fullest, he put it all in the journal. We dodging them bullets, we jumping them hurdles. It's the hood postman, we in the streets, universal. Uh. For the postman, Professor Billy Mayo. This is not a glorification or a glamorization. This is an education. You can go anywhere in the world and get a couple of lives, but you come right here to get your treats. Be sure to click the notification bell, like, subscribe, and share, drop a comment down below. So when the dope content hit, it'll feel like it's the first and the 15th. Lock the door. Lock the door. Lock the door. Lock the door. Lock the door.